This is MITV Primetime News. I am Anwe Benite. First, we begin with the headlines. President Buhari vows to implement APC policies. Senate pledges commitment to improved legislation. Trial of 2014 Nyanya boss terminal bombing mastermind commences. And on the foreign scene, Russia prepares to boost a nuclear arsenal with 40 missiles. And in sports, AC Milan sack coach Filippo Inzaghi. Many thanks for joining us again. President Mohamed Buhari has pledged to implement the cardinal policies of his administration in order to move the country forward. Buhari made the pledge in Johannesburg, South Africa, when he met Nigerians resident in South Africa, where he said government was determined to secure the country, improve the economy and eliminate corruption. The president said the G7 leaders had expressed commitment to help in Nigeria tackle insecurity as well as develop its oil and gas sectors, just as the leaders of the Lake Chad Basin Commission had set up a military command headquarters in Chad with a Nigerian general heading it. Buhari, however, urged Nigerian residents in South Africa to be good ambassadors of the country. According to Buhari, Nigeria and South African leaders will soon meet to discuss several issues bordering on their relationship. President of the Senate, Senator Bukola Saraki, has stated that the Senate only is leadership plans to prepare a legislative agenda by which priority bills that are still left to be attended to by the seventh Senate will be identified and treated with dispatch. Senator Saraki stated this while receiving members of some civil society groups under the ages of the Nigerian Civil Society Organization Situation Room, who paid him a cutly visit in Abuja. He assured that government organizations operating on zero allocation in the past will be captured in the subsequent budget, adding that various leakages in the economy would also be explored and blocked to allow rapid development in the country. National Assembly correspondent Falasha Di Abdul Salami reports that the civil society organizations were further assured of cooperation in order to ensure transparency in the oversight functions and order businesses of his legislature. Senator Saraki therefore urged the civil society organizations as an important aspect of democracy to be more proactive and constructive in your approach to national issues. We are close to the wish of the people we engage in. And, and I think it would be wrong uh, uh, to not to be on our side if we don't engage. I think it's after we engage and we then don't move in the same direction that I think we can criticize. But I think it's key because we all have a role to play. Um, uh, We've been elected to serve the people, and I think with your support and your cooperation, we can do better. I mean, and the key for all of us Nigerians is that we do better. I mean, everybody wants the National Assembly to do well because it's when we do well that the country will be better off. And I think that we all have a role to see that that happens. The civil society group, Clement Wangkwa, while commending the success recorded in the elections of the leadership of the Senate and that of the House of Representatives, that this group seeks partnership in the governance process of the country. It therefore solicited the support and partnership of the National Assembly, especially on the revisiting of some important bills that the Seventh Senate passed but were yet to be assented to, such as the Bill on People Living with Disability, Electoral Act as Amended Bill, Petroleum Industry Bill, PIB, and the 1999 Constitution as amended commend uh, to uh, this Eighth Assembly the important need of amending or going back and revisiting this particular issue and um, getting back this bill into, into effect. Uh, thirdly, the Petroleum Industry Bill is beyond Nigerian concern. We know it's also of international concern and we know that uh, there's a lot of work that is needed to be uh, done there. The continuous trial of the alleged mastermind of the 2014 Nyanya bus terminal bombing, Amino Gushe, along with five others, at the Federal High Court of Abuja has commenced following the earlier order of the trial judge, Justice Ahmed Mohammed, to determine whether the exhibits tendered by the prosecution against the accused persons were obtained under duress. When the matter came 
for trial, within trial, the prosecution witness and investigator from the State Security Service informed the court how the first and third accused persons voluntarily made their statements in relation to the bombing. The witness who has cross-examined by the prosecution counsel, Mohamed Diri, disclosed that Ogushi filed two separate statement sheets between July 30th and August 5th in English, while the third accused person made his statement in Aousa. He has concluded his evidence today, and uh, the Honorable Court adjourned the matter for the examination of the PW1 tomorrow. So that was what happened today. Barista Abdul Hamad Mohammed spoke in an interview with journalists after rising from court session. The Dorshans did not advise to avail the services of the police to help provide the domestic assistance before bringing them into their homes. The State Police Command dropped this hint while parading two suspects in connection with conspiracy and attempted murder of their employers. Justin Akadonye has more. This man, Victor Humpe uh, Benunwa, was employed as a domestic cook through one David Amusu, his predecessor. Two weeks after, they both conspired to rob the owners of the house by drugging their food in order to gain unfettered access into their inner rooms. The state police commissioner, Karate Aderonti, while briefing crime correspondents, said the cook prepared vegetable soup laced with some substance believed to be a sedative and served every member of the household. The incidents resulted resulted in severe pain for the employee and his wife who had attempted to take him to the hospital, including two security guards who later passed out. David Amosu confessed to the crime and admitted that he recommended Victor Humpe and to the complainant and conspired with him two weeks after his engagement to infuse sleeping tablets or sleeping pills into their meals so that they will pass out, which would have given them unfitted access into the compound with assistance of the victim to rob them of their valuables. The two suspects, upon drilling by crime correspondents, speak more on their involvement. It's dinner. So as I prepare the food finish, I put the medicine for the vegetable. As I put the medicine, so I, as they come, I serve them. I come outside. So my mind no carry. <coughs> so Vita now called me and told me that uh, the people get a uh, uh, money, so that uh, the, the people get money, so that uh, whether I know any a uh, sleep uh, tablet where we go use make she make him do for the people make the the sleep. I say now only what I know is the. A silly tablet that I know is a spapatite. So after Vitana, Vitana told me that I should go and brought the spapatite. In another development, three armed robbery suspects who were fingered in the incessant skirmishes on the island and its environs were also paraded. Where we are coming back from TBS, on our way back, those APC boys attack us at an hour bus stop. So we started fighting with each other. We are taking it to fight because of PDP. We are taking it to fight because of PDP and APC. And when PD, when APC enter, they come arrest us. Say, what is, where is our instrument? We are taking to fight. Exhibits displayed before crime correspondents include one pump action rifle, one single barrel rifle, four rounds of cartridges, cutlasses, and a battle axe. The state police command, however, solicited the cooperation of Rustin by availing them of useful information to ensure the safety of Lagos neighborhoods. Justin Akadunye, MRTV News. Nigerians have been warned against the activities of smugglers, especially those that specialize in illegal importation of frozen food. Director General of the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NATEC, Paul Ori, gave the warning while speaking with selected newsmen in Lagos. Ori advised consumers of frozen poultry products to patronize locally made rather than risking their lives depending on the imported ones. 
He explained that a recent research conducted by the agency revealed that most of the imported products are not hygienic and could be very dangerous to the health of Nigerians. Most of these smuggled chicken or smuggled poultry products, uh, maybe because the way they are transported, the, the way they are hidden in different, uh, uh, not properly packaged, they, they contain a lot of uh, contaminants. Could be formalin, could be preservation, it could be high levels of antibiotics, residue, uh, and other contaminants, heavy metals. And that is why we are discouraging members of the public from consuming them. We are particularly concerned about the high level of antibiotic residue because this can contain, uh, this, can, uh, this can cause drug resistance. So the health implication is enough, and now that is emphasizing on this, that I should consider this so as to know what to import to our people. But well, like they said, the laws are there, but we, the people, are to assist to get out. Uh, the law enforcement agent to assist us with this type of thing. So the higher incidence of all these diseases that we have around is a major reason for this research and, and some contribution. What is it? The uh, poultry industry can rise up to the occasion and assist, work with NAVDA to protect the health of Nigerians by scaling up production is very, very significant because their mandate of safeguarding the health of the nation is being negatively affected by the fact that consumption of some of these products is bad for the health of Nigerians. And we're saying there's an alternative. And away from health stories, parents need to be more enlightened if Nigerian hopes to end the scourge of child marriage. The devastating effects, which include physical vagina fistula, long-term depression, and open suicide, have only brought untold trauma to African children. These were the submissions of the Director, Lagos State Office of the Public Defender, OPD, Omotola Rotimi, while briefing questions from Justin Akadenye at the Radio Vision Plaza of MITV on the Day of the African Child. The way forward now is that we have to continue to sensitize um, parents, the public, and then whoever is found wanting, we must ensure prosecution of such, of such cases. Sorry. Well, one, of our, one of the functions of the Office of the Public Defender is to enforce and ensure implementation of the child rights law and also to protect the social economic rights of children in Lagos State. The, OP, the OPD head used the opportunity to encourage Lagosians to avail themselves to the services of their office when issues of child rights and domestic violence arise. Theme: What has what have we done? We have assisted so many children in Lagos State, and I have two cases in mind right now where our office has actually um, rescued a girl from the streets, and the girl was actually given out in child marriage. Of the African Child, which is commemorated every year on June 16th by member states of the African Union, has as a theme 2015, accelerating our collective efforts to end child marriage in Africa. You're still on to our news. We'll take a short break now when we return. Financial stories. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back. The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Cooperation, NDIC, has stated the banks operating in the country are healthy and in line with global standard. It also said that it monitors activities of the banks in the country. The Deputy Director of Research, NDIC, Hashim Hamed, who made disclosure in MENA during the sensitization of members of the 2015 Barge A Stream 11 National Youth Service Corps at the orientation camp in Pico, Niger State, said the cooperation undertakes proper supervision of the banks in the country as an insurer to ensure they remain healthy. Hashim further stated that a bank that is identified as distressed or in difficulty is normally turned over to NDIC for management. 
In the related development, the NBIC declared that despite the progress made in the financial sector in recent times, 65% of Nigerians still don't have access to banking. And in more business stories, the Central Bank of Nigeria is planning to borrow about 872.96 billion naira in a new Treasury bill issue between June 18th and September 3rd. Data released by the Central Bank showed that it will auction 215.12 billion naira worth of the three million paper, 238.5 billion naira in the six month debt and 419.34 billion naira worth in the one-year paper. The total debt proposed for the third quarter is 12.3% short of the 995.5 billion naira raised in the second quarter of the year. Just as the CBN had said it would issue Treasury bills worth 730.499 billion naira in the second quarter of 2015. Nigeria, Algeria, Angola and Iran are interested in blending their light oil with Venezuela's heavy oil to get a better price for their crude. The president of the Venezuelan state oil company, PDVSA, Olodio del Pino, who is on a two-day official visit to New Delhi, India, disclosed this. He had in April announced talks on a novel plan to blend the country's heavy crude with light oil from other OPEC allies, seeking to create a new variety that can compete against swelling United States and Canadian supplies. The proposal, which will expand on a pilot scheme embarked upon last year that involved all German oil and vision supplying refineries built for medium-grade crudes rather than the light oil that has become plentiful as a result of the North American shell boom. Del Pino predicted oil prices will recover in the second half of the year, driven by demand from big Asian markets like India and China. We'll take another short break when we return foreign stories. Stay with us. Welcome to the Foreign Desk. An Egyptian court upheld a death sentence against the post-president Mohamed Morsi for plotting jailbreaks and attacks on police during the 2011 uprising after the court had initially sentenced Morsi and more than 100 other defendants to death last month. Tuesday's ruling comes after the court consulted Egypt's Grand Mufti, the government interpreter of Islamic law, who plays an advisory role. Early on Tuesday, the same court sentenced Morsi, the country's first democratically elected president, to life in prison on charges of spying for the Palestinian Hamas movement. Lebanon, Shah, Hezbollah and Iran, though Tuesday's verdict can be appealed. Then Army Chief and now President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi hoisted Morsi on July 3, 2013, and since then has overseen a sweeping crackdown against his supporters, with the crackdown leaving hundreds of Muslim Brotherhood supporters dead and thousands jailed. President Vladimir Putin has said Russia will put more than 40 new intercontinental ballistic missiles into service this year. It is a part of a wide-reaching program to modernize the country's military. Speaking at an arms fair, President Putin said the weapons will be able to overcome even the most technically advanced anti-missile defense systems after the U.S. proposed increasing its military presence in NATO states in Eastern Europe as tensions are high over Russia's role in the conflict in eastern Ukraine. NATO and the Western leaders accuses Russia of sending soldiers and heavy weapons, including tanks and missiles, to the pro-Russian separatists in the eastern Ukraine. Russia has repeatedly denied this, insisting that any Russian fighting there are volunteers. The missiles are high-tech replacements, not additions to Russia's nuclear arsenal, but a nod to the U.S. is clear. Al-Qaeda has confirmed that Nasser al-Huhayshi, the leader of his offshoot in the Arabian Peninsula, has been killed in a U.S. drone strike in Yemen. His death was announced by the AQAP group in an online video. His successor was named as military chief Qasim al-Rami, while 
Wuhashi was seen as Al Qaeda's second in command and was a former personal assistant to Osama bin Laden, just as US officials say built one of the most active Al Qaeda branches. In Yemen, resurgent Al Qaeda militants have seized a territory and infrastructure, indirectly assisted by Saudi led airstrikes on the rebel Houthi movement, the Shia Muslim foes. But the death of a number of leading figures in AQAP in recent months have reportedly filled rumors among supporters that it has been successfully targeted by intelligence agencies. Nasser al Huhashi was a major global figure among jihadists, of whom supporters of Al Qaeda's rival Islamic State viewed Huhashi with respect. We'll take another short break when we return. Spot stories. Stay with us. <laughs> Make your child enjoy quality TV and sound education at Holy Land Schools, an internationally recognized award-winning citadel of learning. Blessed with seasoned teachers, state-of-the-art facilities, as well as conducive environment for learning. The management of Wonderland Schools is announcing entrance examinations into GSS-1, GSS-2, and GSS-3, as well as SS-1 and SS-2. Entrance examination will come up on Saturday, 28th of June, 2015, by 9 a.m. at Ipaja and Magodo campuses. Admission forms are available at all our campuses. Honeyland Schools, Ipaja Campus, opposite a persuasive gate by Roy Ipaja Lagos. Honeyland Montessori School, Nice Book 11 at Jasa Command Road, at Jasa Ipaja Lagos, as well as Honeyland College, Magodo Campus, CMB Road, Magodo Lagos. For further inquiries, call 0909 525 7722 or 0803 719 4970 or visit our website on www.honeyland.com. Schools.com. And on sports news tonight, Germany and Norway advance with wins to the last 16 at the Women's World Cup on Monday as a draw was enough to see host Canada and China through. Favourites Germany beat Thailand 4-0 to progress as Group B leaders ahead of Norway who secured their berth by beating Ivory Coast 3-1. Germany came up against stiff resistance from the 29th ranked Asians in Winnipeg before Melania Leopold broke through after 24 minutes. And two quick free headers from a second half substitute Lena Pregerman on 56 and 58 minutes got the world's top ranked team into their stride. In all the results, Canada were held 1-1 by the Netherlands, but it was enough to top Group A ahead of China, who were held 2-2 in their fiery do-or-die clash against New Zealand. China pulled ahead with 30 minutes left when Wang Shanshan headed in, but the advantage lasted only four minutes when Anna Wilkinson headed past Wang Fai. In the meantime, Nigeria's senior women team, the Super Falcons, did nothing short of victory against the United States of America to improve their chances of reaching the next stage of the 2015 Women's World Cup in Canada on Wednesday. The African champions boast of a point from two games and will face their stiffest opposition in the group of death when they face Jill Ellis side at the BC Place Stadium, Vancouver. Despite the North Americans leading the group, they are still struggling to exert their supremacy and will have to cope with the quick Nigerian forwards should they dream of continuing their dominance over the Falcons on the international scene. AC Milan have confirmed the dismissal of coach Filippo Inzaghi just a year after the former youth team coach only took charge of the senior squad last summer. After a disappointing 2014-2015 campaign, we saw Milan fall to fail to qualify for Europe after finishing in 10th in Syria. The Rosoneri decided to part company with the World Cup winner. Milan owner Silvio Berlusconi had been pursuing a new coach, having done his utmost to try to persuade former boss Carlo Ancelotti to return to San Siro after his Real Madrid exit. But Ancelotti opted to take a break from game to recover from shadow back surgery. The Rosaneri are now set to hire Sinisa Mihaj Lovic, 
who stepped down as Sampdoria coach at the end of last season. In tennis, Rafael Nadal suffered a shock first round exit from the Wimbledon warm up as Queen's Club, as his Spanish star, was beaten 6 weeks, 6 7, 6 8, 6 4, by unrounded Ukrainian Alexander Dolgopolov on Tuesday. Nadal's dismissal defeat against this small defeat against the world number 29 is the latest and growing list of lackluster performance in a troubled 2015 campaign for the former world number one. Il passante vincente di Dolgo Polo. Finally in basketball, the Denver Nuggets announced on Monday that former coach of the Sacramento Kings, Mike Malone, has been hired as the club's new coach. Sacramento fired Malone after an 11-13 start last season. The team going 2-7 after standout Damocles Cousins suffered a viral infection. Malone had been an assistant with the New York Knicks, Cleveland Cavaliers as well as New Orleans and Golden State. That's our news tonight, but before we go, a recap of the top stories. President Mohamed Buhari has pledged to implement the cardinal policies of his administration in order to move the country forward. President of the Senate, Senator Bukola Saraki, has stated that the Senate, under his leadership, plans to prepare a legislative agenda by which priority bills that are still left to be attended to by the Seventh Senate will be identified and treated with dispatch. The continuous trial of the alleged mastermind of the 2014 Yanya boss terminal bombing, Amino Guche, along with five others at the Federal High Court of Abuja, has commenced following the earlier order of the trial judge, Justice Ahmed Mohammed, to determine whether the exhibit tendered by the prosecution against the accused persons were obtained under duress. And the foreign saying would tell you that President Vladimir Putin has said Russia will put more than 40 new intercontinental ballistic missiles into service this year. It is part of a wide reaching program to modernize the country's military. And in sports, AC Milan have confirmed the dismissal of coach Filippo Inzaghi just a year after the former youth team coach only took charge of the senior squad last summer. You can watch us live on our website, www.mitvonline.tv, or on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash mitvmg, by clicking on the Welcome tab. For BlackBerry, Android, and other mobile devices, you can download our app, MIT will start them on your respective stores, or tweet us at MITVLabors. That's our news tonight. Many thanks for watching. I am Anna Benitez. You have yourself a lovely night. Good night.